Well, would you look at this? Hey guys, my praying mantis eggs are hatching today. Well, at least one of them is. I have several. And here's the little critters through the window envelope. So I'm going to be going outside, um, probably in a couple hours once it cools down a little bit, and let them go, and let them grow, and let them do their thing, and make my garden free of bad insects and full of good insects. Hi everybody, so this video is going to be a little different than normal. This isn't about worms, but it's about these good guys. These are baby praying mantises that hatched today. I collected their eggs last fall from praying mantises that laid them in my yard. And they overwintered in the freezer. And about three weeks ago, I'm sorry, in the refrigerator, not the freezer. I overwintered them in the refrigerator. About three weeks ago, I took them out, as I do every year. This has been a continuous cycle for about a decade now, since I first got them. And they're hatching today. So we're going to go ahead and release the ones that are hatched. There's an awful lot in there. Now I have the hose on, because what I've learned from the history of doing this is what you want at the time of their release is you want it not too hot out so I've waited till it's almost sundown here you want to give them a little moisture so if they don't find food right away at least they don't dry up and dehydrate so without further ado let's grab the hose and go find some spots I'm not gonna let them all go in the same spot um, so we're gonna stop in a few places at least where the hose is going to reach all right, so I've gone ahead and sprayed some areas down, and a few at a time, we're going to let some of these guys go. Now this first spot here, this is a little um, perennial garden. The bamboo in the middle is to keep my dogs from running through. In the pot, there's some volunteer lettuce that came up from last year, which is more than ready for me to pick. and. There's a couple types of echinacea in here, and this is some milkweed that's getting ready to blossom. And here's a nice clump of um, what will be black-eyed Susans. Well, it is black-eyed Susans, but it hasn't blossomed yet, so we're going to let a few of them go right here. And all I'm going to do is let me pause you to open the bag. All right, so I'm going to show you in the bag. Because what I'm going to do is just open the bag and go to a few different places and let them I'm going to let them crawl out on their own and guide them if necessary but normally as they hatch they kind of march towards the top top of the egg and release them oh there went one hold on I'm gonna get a better view Right, I just saw one hop. I hope I got that on the video. But don't worry, there's only several million more. Let me shake the bag. You can see they're coming down now towards the edge of the bag. <laughs> there goes a little guy. There he is. He's right there. Here comes another. There goes another. Look at how adorable they are. Oh my goodness. Now again, I don't want to put too many in one spot. The reason is that praying mantises have to feed within their first 48 hours of hatching. And if they don't, they will be cannibalistic. And they will eat one another. So just in case they don't find food right away, I don't want to have them too close to each other where they're going to eat one another. Now right here, I have this rose bush, a teacup rose bush. Whoop, there's one on my hand. You can't see it because it's on the hand I'm holding the phone with. But I'm going to let a few out on this rose bush because that usually gets aphids and other things. Let's see. Okay, I think I opened the bag a little bit better. Let's see. There's one little guy right there. There's another. There he goes. It's funny how they just jump. I'm trying to let you see where they land, but 
So there they, there they go. <laughs> Look at the little guy. Oh my goodness. They're too stinking cute, aren't they? All right. Oh, they're all kamikaze out now. Okay. Let's go over here. This is a strawberry patch that I haven't been keeping up with. And I know there's lots of little jumping spiders that live down in here. So let's just put this bag down. One at a time. I'm going to just let a few jump out over here. And then I'll move the bag down to another spot. Now I, I have multiple eggs in here and I can't remember the name. It starts with an O, the real name for egg case. It's like Oompa Fay or Oompa, I don't know, something crazy. But I just call it egg case. See that guy right down there? Now you can tell it's actually drinking water. It's one of the reasons I spray this, because they just hatched. Within, within the last couple of hours and I know I've learned from doing this for about a decade now yearly that when they hatch and I always do it in the same type of paper bag with a window they're hungry and they're thirsty so you can see the little guy down there just kind of peeking around All right I'm gonna move it down in the strawberry patch a little bit more it doesn't look like we've got quite as much water down here, but you can see now they're starting to come out and climb along the bag. And again, I started this about a decade ago. I bought a single praying mantis egg case from a company that's still in business called Gardens Alive. And they sell beneficial insect and the eggs and the bugs. And the praying mantises, they hatched that first year. And they did an amazing job. And they stuck around in my yard. And they took care of all the problem pests. And what I, you know, throughout that first year, I did a lot of reading on just what happens with them. And what I learned is after they mate, they get very, very fat, the females do. Those, um, and you can tell how how fat you can tell they're about to lay their eggs because they get super super fat and they get to the point where they can no longer fly and once they lay their eggs the female dies so what i've been doing i have a 10 gallon aquarium look at they're all drinking with a screen cover and i put a few sticks in there and when i find late in the fall a female that's lost her ability to fly and is very obvious about ready to lay eggs. I get her and put her in the aquarium and allow her to lay her eggs on the sticks. And then I let her go, even though I know she's going to die. And I do have a video of that, of her laying her eggs, of many of them laying their eggs in the aquarium. And I collect the egg and put it in a bag and put it in my refrigerator. And about three to four weeks before I know that I want them to be hatching, I take the bag out and put it on my counter. And that, that warm-up indicates it's time for them to hatch. Now I just set this on top of a, um, a milkweed plant here. Oops, it almost just fell, which would have been okay. I'm going to let a couple get out here on this milkweed. See their little, look at their little selves. And I have a lot of videos and a lot of pictures. If you go to my Instagram account, you can see a lot of them. But I can also link it here of me with the praying mantises. Sorry, I was trying to get one that was crawling up the back of my arm. Alright guys, come on, a couple of you can offload here. Come on. Come on, little buddies. Yep. Look at you. Look at how adorable you are. When I see you again, you're going to be big and fat. And you're going to have done a really good job, right? Yeah. Here you go, little buddy. Oh, you gotta get down. 
Come on, go start your life. Go start your life out here. But I don't want to, Mother. I want to stay with you. Oh, he took a plunge. I don't know where it went. All right, you can see there's, there's quite a few that have climbed off over here on the butterfly bush. I mean, sorry, on the milkweed. I do have a butterfly bush. Now we're going to go down to the corner where I have both black flowering or uh, in bloom um, blackberry bushes and roses that are blooming. And I know there's a lot of aphids. Well, there should be. I don't think I have aphids this year, but I'm going to let some go right here. And it doesn't look like I did a great job getting a hose down here. So once I let them go, I will get the hose and spray a little towards the ground. I don't want to blast them because they are so small. It's difficult to get the bag. Okay, let's see if we can look in the bag. Oh, there's another one that climbed onto my hand here. Let's let him go on the flower. Yeah. That's pretty awesome right there. Sorry, there's someone jogging by with music on. It's pretty awesome. A baby praying mantis on a rose. Look at them all. Now, I was saying, before I rudely interrupted myself, there's maybe five or six egg cases in here. I've given them away to two different people. One I know said that theirs were hatching today as well. The other, not yet, but in due time. But I don't think all of these are hatching, because usually there's a couple hundred in each egg case. So, um, once I let go the ones that are done hatching, then I will check the eggs to see. They keep jumping on my hand. I'll check the egg cases to see which ones haven't yet haven't yet hatched and bring them back in for the night. So I'll let just a few go here. If at any point you get tired of watching this, you know, I understand. I'm gonna to try to film as much of it as I can before the mosquitoes eat me alive because I know there's people that are very curious in this. Look at this little guy in the rose petal. Just amazing. I mean, that's, that's nature at its finest. And I could tell right here, look at this little blackberry bud. It has sort of like a little teeny spider web on it, so there's gotta be something that's alive over here. Try to give them a little shake. Ooh, I dropped an egg case on the ground. Okay, so here's what an egg case looks like. And there's this one attached to a cross branch. Let me pick this bag back up before I lose them all in one spot. Let's see, going back down here a little bit. We'll go down here a little more. I have some roses down here. They're mostly on the outside of my fence. They're a really beautiful salmon color. And again, there's um, here's another kind of milkweed right here. This is the showy milkweed. And there's a nice amount of moisture on this blackberry spot. So we'll let some we'll let some offload here. Come on, little buddy. Let's give you a little shake. I know, it's a big scary world out there. Uh-oh, looks like one got squished in there. And there's another that's... There's a couple on the outside of the bag. You know what I'm going to do? Again, I'm just going to set the bag right in here. And hopefully it stays. Zoom out a little bit. And we'll just see if you start their life. It reminds me of Charlotte's Web, where all the little spiders are leaving. Goodbye, Mother. It's actually sad for me. I mean... I'm so happy that, you know, I, I use natural methods rather than um, pesticides or insecticides or any sort of toxic measures. But, you know, every year I have these guys in my refrigerator for months and months and months, and then I let them go, and it's kind of like, I don't know, it's a little bit sad. Like I want them all to live, and I want them all to grow up and get big and... And I know that's not going to happen. I know birds are going to get some, and bugs are going to get some, and some are going to eat one another, and 
That's just part of nature, and that's probably why there's so many in each egg case. Come on, guys. You gotta come out. It's like... Maybe because I don't have the bag touching the leaf. Well, I see one down there. Let's tilt the bag a little bit more. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Okay, let's move this down a little bit more. Here, let's put a couple on. Let's put a couple on the milkweed pods. These aren't wet, but there's moisture. Here, there's moisture. Well, here's a leaf that's wet. I just used the hose and sprayed a little bit. And I don't think it reached everywhere I wanted it to. But here's a little puddle. Come in, guy. Go get a drink of water. Whoop! You jumped right down to the ground. Probably on my foot. Come on, little buddy. There you go. What a big world it is, huh? Let's see if we can get any to go onto this milkweed pod here, or blossom. Come on, guys. Hi, camera. You have to stay focusing, little phone. I'm trying to stick the thing in the bag. Like I said, I'm holding the phone and the bag. Oh, there's one on there. Look at him. Such a big world out here. And this one is drinking. I heard you, bird. You're not eating my babies. I will watch them. There was a couple more, I think. Come on, guys. Let me give them a little rattle. See, there's still quite a few hatched in there. Yeah, that one is definitely, absolutely getting a drink. And that's pretty awesome, right? A praying mantis that's a couple hours old getting a drink. And you can see right over here, there's a little fly. So there's food. I haven't really had a problem with insects yet, so... Um, I don't have any kinds of bad critters. There's a nice wet patch of blackberry blossoms that they could enjoy. Some moisture, some camouflage, maybe some food. All right, who else is getting off at this stop? Come on. Come on. Alright, hold on guys, I need to spray this area a little bit more. Alright, so I've moved us down to my apple tree. You can see some baby apple clumps there. Let's get the bag open. Take a peek. Yep, there's lots of them in there. Let's set the bag up here. I'll tilt it down a bit. Again, you're doing what I see is what you see. So it's a little clumsy, but I'm going to try to get this done. Go, little buddy. There you go. Come on, you can find something to eat on this tree, I'm sure. Come on. Whoop! I dropped. I dropped an egg. An egg sack. Uh, oh, an apple just, a baby apple just fell and bunked the bag. So you can see how, how I cut them off of the sticks. They always lay their eggs at an X in a stick, two sticks. And these were actually um, catnip branches here. There. I wet the comfrey that's growing down below the apple tree. Let's put a couple here. Let me set the bag down in here. We can... One that came out. There's another on top of the bag. 
other one over here. Let's see. You gonna come out, little fella? Come on, guys. Let's see, I got a little water in the bag now. They're probably all drinking in here. Look, this little guy's drinking up water also. Yep, I guess when you've been in a, a dried out container for almost a year, you're thirsty when you get out. They are, they're drinking water in the bag. All right, let's do this a little bit there. Okay, so I stuck my hand in the bag. I got a few in my hand. Got his little bent up, but I actually have him going up the back of my neck. This happens every year. I have to shake my clothes off outside after I get changed because they climb all over me. All right, come on, little guy. Yes, I see you tilting your head, but you have to go free. Come on. Go free. You can do it. There you go. A face anybody can love. Here's your face. Hold on, I gotta get this one off the back of my neck. Okay. Look at him. Let's see, where'd he go? Well done. Put this little guy staring at us. Mother, come back. You forgot me. It's so scary out here. <laughs> All right, let's get some more. All right, I've got a few more in my hand, I think. Yes, and now we're at my Asian pear tree. And there are some pears in here. I just can't zoom into them right now. But the leaves are nice and wet. There one goes. Let's take a look at this guy. It's kind of windy out, which is good. It's not... I've learned again from, from years past that if you let them go in the middle of the day when it's the sun is out and it's hot, they just cook. They don't have a chance of finding shelter or food or moisture. So I've learned to either wait till after it rains so we don't have any rain in the forecast or I put the hose on first. Just a little bit. I don't need to soak everything, but just enough. Here's a little cluster of pears. There's some more pears up here. Here's some more pears up here. This tree is pretty prolific. And again, these are Asian pears. These aren't regular pears. Okay, I went outside of the fence. We're on the outside of the rose bush now. And I sprayed a bit of water over here, although I didn't do a great job. But I know there's more splashes of water. So let's let some of these guys go over here. Looks like they're getting less and less eager about leaving. Let me down the back one. Okay. Boing. <laughs> I got one. Okay. Here you go, little guy. The one that's squished on my hand, and that happens. It's probably squished in the back. Uh-oh. That one's not looking good. You okay, little bud? Uh-oh. You may have a fatality. No, he's actually okay. All right. Get a few more. Okay, here we go. It's that same squishy one. All right. I tried to get a couple on this rose here. I took 
grabbed a couple of the egg cases out in my hand just to pull some out of the bag. There's one going up the back of my arm. Try to get him on the rose. Nope, he's not wanting part of that at all. Come on, little guy. Um, hi. That is my neighbor's child is probably going to come back. So I may have to pause. Okay, there's a whole bunch that are in this um, fake hay that I had in the bag for them to hide in once they hatch. And there's actually a whole bunch in there. Let's see if they're going to come out. Whoop, I see one. See what on the bottom there. A little reluctant to take the plunge. Come on, little guy. Come on, you see him hanging right on the bottom there. Yeah, he's almost. Did he go? I think he did. And I didn't even see it. Oh, yes, I see him now right in there. Oh, what a little cutie. All right, let's grab a couple more here. Some are just diving out of the bag without me reaching them. See them all down there? All right, let's try to shake some out. on the outside of the bag. All right, you get over there. All right, let's go back and I want to put some on. Let me see if I can scoop them up. Oh my, I have quite a few in my hand. Some are alive, some are not. And I think, I know they do shed within a number of hours of hatching. I think a lot of these are the exoskeletons. They took all the exoskeletons. Praying mantises shed repeatedly throughout their lives. And starting on the day that they first hatch. And you can see there are some clinging to this little this little hay ball. It's not really hay, it's artificial hay. Let's put them down. We'll put them down in a little nook here. Let them jump off. Milkweed is a good spot, isn't it? Oh, heck, I don't know if they jumped off or not. Hmm, hold on. Okay, I've got another one running up my arm here. Let's see if we can put him onto that. There he goes. Ooh, he went away quickly. He was down there somewhere. There he is. This little bugger's in a hurry. Let's collect the rest that are currently hatched and just put them, we'll put them here in the blackberries and they'll do quite well and then tomorrow there'll be another release. Let me grab them. Alright, so what I'm going to do is try to I'm going to dump all the contents out right here. And I will pick up the egg cases and put them back in the bag and bring them back in the house. I just want to get the rest of the, the live guys out. 
Oh my, there's a lot more in the bag. Well, now I gotta shake a little harder. Okay. Uh, okay, so here's where we're at. We have some hiding guys. We have a bunch of exoskeletons. A whole bunch. And I have all the little oomph loomph cases on the ground here that I'm going to pick up and inspect and see what's left to hatch. Let me dump these out and then I'll go up to my deck and show you what we have left. Okay, so here we are. I'm back on my deck. I have a little plastic tray here. And what I did is I put all the egg cases in here. Now, I don't see obvious signs that any of these are completely empty and that would reflect based on the number of praying mantises there were. There usually are a lot more. Um, look at this guy. Look at this. Oh, that's it. That's an exoskeleton. You see that? And usually what they'll do if they hatch in large numbers, they shed their skin usually instantly. They unfold and they shed and they will eat their exoskeletons as their first meal, the way many insects actually do. Um, I don't see, see this one must have been taken off by rosebush, but I don't see any that have large holes chewed through them. But usually you can tell which ones hatched and then I'll just take the the one that is obviously hatched and I will leave it outside under a bush somewhere or something but I'm not seeing a big hole in any of these usually you see a hole chewed through now this one has has a hole right there which may or may not be the hatching one. These feel pretty heavy. Usually once they hatch, they get much lighter. So, what I suspect is this one here. Mm, this one, that hole there. And this one, that partial hole, but most particularly this one. Maybe that one is what is hatching. But by no means are they completely hatched. Based on the exoskeletons I saw and the quantity, there's a lot more to go. So what I'm going to do is put these back in the bag overnight and check them in the morning. And if you ask, well, it's warm enough, they're hatching now. Why don't you just, you know, put them outside? And the reason I don't is, well, there's a few reasons, but mainly it's predators. I have skunks, possums, raccoons, squirrels, black bear, fox, coyote, and any of them will pick these up and crunch on them like a snack, and they can smell them out. If I left any of these out tonight, I wouldn't find them in the morning, not where I left them. And when I did find any of them, they would be cracked open and chewed. These little praying mantises are a delicacy for all the rodents and marsupials and whatever I just mentioned. So since I overwinter them all winter in my refrigerator, I am careful about taking care of them until I set them free. And I'm going to go ahead and put a link to a video um, that was narrated showing praying mantises laying eggs in the aquarium. And again, the link that you're going to see wasn't a praying mantis that was raised in an aquarium. I would never keep one as a pet in Connecticut. A praying mantis is a state insect and you actually can't keep them as pets. What I do is I, I watch them throughout the year and I have an area of catnip, catmint. And for some reason when it's after they mate and before they lay their eggs, the huge, fat, very pregnant females seem to hide in that catmint and it's at that point that I collect them in one per cage put them in the aquarium I let them lay their egg case 
and then I set it free. And they do die. The females do die as soon as they lay their eggs. So, you know, it, it, it's a sad thing. There's no way to prevent that. Um, you know, I've heard, I've heard some people say, well, they can live up to two to three weeks afterwards. And maybe they can, but, you know, it, it's sad to me. I wish they lived more than a year, but that's the food chain. I'm looking at one of the, uh, the roses here in front of my deck that they're going to do good jobs on. And this is one of the rose bushes that uh, we just released some on. So if you're interested, there's going to be follow-up release videos. And if you're interested, I'm going to put a link to videos showing them laying their eggs and videos showing releases from other years. If you have any questions, please let me know. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please give a big thumbs up or a little thumbs up. Any thumbs up is good. Just a thumbs up. Comments are always awesome. If you stayed till this point, you're amazing. And thank you. And I hope to see you on future follow-up videos.